Hello guys, welcome to drilling-academy.com. Watching visual is a more effective way to learn than reading wordy text. This is the purpose of this visual about gas, which is another foundation subject of well control. This session will present you how gas behaves differently in water basement and oil basement, and what would happen if we let gas either traveling up uncontrollably or we just shut the well in and do nothing more than that. And why would we bother with time consuming Q methods and controlling the choke pressure, which is quite anxious sometimes? So, the first case is the gas kick in water basement. In this well here, we have water basement. And upon detecting the kick here, right, we have gas influx comes into the well more in here in form of bubbles. All right, we know that gas does not dissolve much in water, so gas stays in bubbles, and they gather together into big bubbles in water basement. And gas is lighter than mud, so it will float and migrate upward. That's called my, uh, migration or percolation. So in this visual here, upon taking the kick, we see a PKN is apparently a surface which is equal to the volume V0 which is the volume of the gas bubble at the bottom hole here. So when the gas bubble comes in the well ball, gas influx comes in the well ball, it carries formation pressure with that into the well ball. So what is at this initial state, what is the for the bottom of pressure? The bottom pressure now equals formation pressure, which is also the pressure inside the gas bubble. Remember, the pressure inside the gas bubble is different from the hydrostatic pressure of the gas bubble. With the gas having a uh, gas gradient of 0.1 psi per foot, the hydrostatic pressure of the gas bubble is very little in compared with the pressure inside the gas bubble, which is formation pressure. And now we don't show the welding, which is let the gas bubble to travel up, let it travel up and expand without control to see what happened. All right, so recall the Boyle's law, the gas law. Initial states, inside the gas bubble, we have pressure, formation pressure, and we have the volume of the bubble is V0. So at any time, the bubble is in the wave wall here, it will have the pressure inside it is called PI. And it volume at that time is called VI. And now let's see what happened here. Okay, the gas bubbles travels up. Travel up, expand, displace the mud in the annulus. We will see lots of PKN in here. And because the pressure inside the bubble now is reduced and the volume is increased, less mud in the annulus left. Higher start the pressure of the mud in the annulus is reduced. And because of the Boyle's law in here, we know that when the VI increase, the PI will reduce. So the combination of the PI reduce and reduce hydrostatic pressure of the mud in here will produce a reduced bottom of pressure. And thus more influx is invited to come in the well ball. So right, this is very bad for well control, the first consequence. Now let's examine the case that we shut the well in. We have PTN as surface delta V equals to the volume, initial volume of the gas bubble at the bottom hole, right? Now, bottom hole pressure will equate formation pressure, which is the pressure inside the gas bubble. And it will also equate the high, the certain drip pressure in here, plus hydrostatic pressure of the mud in the roof screen. It will also equate the certain casing pressure, plus hydrostatic pressure of the mud in the annulus, plus hydrostatic pressure of the gas bubble which is worked out from the gas gradient 0.1 psi per foot, all right? And now we shut the well in, close the choke, and don't do anything. We let gas percolate up to see what happened. Gas molecules, gas bubbles start percolate up, right? Uh, it will displace the mud on top down to below it, right? Now the volume of the bubbles is unchanged. And by the Boyle's law, volume unchanged, the pressure will be unchanged. So what is the pressure inside the bubble now? It is formation pressure. So when the bubble goes up to the surface and is not expanded, it will carry formation pressure when it to the surface. 
below the bubble is hydrostatic pressure of the mud, same as before. So now the sum of these two pressure will produce a double bottom of pressure, which is too big for a shoe, for the shoe, and the shoe would be broken, and you would have losses. This is also another bad consequence. Now we come to oil-based mud. All right, now we know that some hydrocarbon gases dissolves and disperses into oil basement. Therefore, on surface, pit heat is hardly detectable when a small volume of gas in flux comes in vapor. Similarly, when a large volume of gas in flux may cause very little of pit heat on surface. So, upon having the kick in here, we have gas in flux in the vapor in here. It has volume V0. And it carries formation pressure PF with it into the web ball. But on surface, you will see pit gain is very small, which is less, which is diff a lot different from V0 here. Right? And now we don't shut the welding. We let gas travel up in the web ball. We keep circulating the gas up in the web ball to see what happens. Okay? Gas is in solution with mud. Circulated up when it reaches the depth of the bubble point, will break into bubbles, and the bubbles keep traveling up in the endless, and it will unload, it will expand the volume now, and unload the mud in the endless. All right. So how do we work out the depth of the bubble point? By convention, we take 600 psi divided that by the mud gradient, which is mud weight times 0 0.052. Right, and this depth is quite near surface. And you will see the unloading happen very quickly, right? You will see it before the depth of the bubble point. But after the depth of the bubble point, it will happen very fast. That's the major difference between gas in water basement and gas in oil basement because of the gas dissolution into oil basement. All right, so now let's examine here. After the bubble point depth, the gas volume is increased a lot. And by the Boyle's law, when the volume is increased, the pressure inside the bubble is reduced. And because the volume of the gas bubble is increased a lot, it displaces the a lot of volume of mud out of the wear ball. So we will have less hydrostatic pressure of the mud in the wear ball. So now the combination of less hydrostatic pressure of the mud plus less pressure inside the bubble, you will have reduced burning on pressure. It will be much smaller than formation pressure as it was before. So therefore, you have more influx to come in the well, similar to water-based mud, right? Now, what happens if we have a kick, we shut the well in, and we don't do anything? Similarly, you have PF, which is carried from uh, formation to the wear ball by the influx. We have V0, which is the initial volume of the influx at the bottom row. On the surface, you have PTN, which is different from V0. All right, shut the well in, do nothing. And as we said, the gas molecules are much, li much lighter than the mud, right? So then gas molecules will start percolate up slowly. All right, once the gas reaches, Depth the bubble point, gas breaks into bubbles and keep traveling up in the annulus. But now the volume is unchanged, right? We don't allow it to expand. Therefore, by the Boyle's law, volume unchanged, pressure unchanged. So the pressure inside the bubble now is formation pressure. And below the bubble is the mud. The mud is not displaced out of the wear ball. So therefore, the same hydrostatic pressure of the mud plus formation pressure now inside the bubble, both are acting against the bottom of the hole. So it will double than the formation pressure. It will be too big for the shoe. You will break the shoe, you will have losses, similar to the water based much case I meant. Oh, now, all right, let's say now during the gas migration or percolation process, some you may need to work out the speed, how much, how fast, the gas is migrating. So this formula is the one that will help you to work out. You take, you record the pressure increment on either pressure, uh, casing pressure gauge or group by pressure gauge 
every minute and you take that increment divided by the mud uh, gradient. Mud gradient equals 0 0.052 times mud weight, okay? So let's look at this visual to see how it goes. See now, the gas bubble percolates up, but the volume is unchanged. The pressure inside it is unchanged. So volume of pressure will increase, casein pressure is increased, group bar pressure is increased, all is increased. So you take this data P in the minute, you record every minute and you divide by, by the much more than you will have the speed in foot per minute. You take that, you times 60, you will get the speed in foot per hour. All right, so if at any time you need to bring the bottom of pressure down to initial value, which is formation pressure. So what you need to do, you open the choke, you bleed off the choke in control, but you will stick with the drill by pressure gauge. Don't pay attention to the casing pressure gauge. Stick with the drill by pressure gauge, okay? It's the governing gauge, all right? So you bring, you want to bring the, the casing and the, the, the drill by pressure gauge back down to initial certain drill by pressure, all right? So you will bleed off a certain volume. You want to work out how much your volume, the volume you were, you have, you, you need to bleed off. This is the formula. Okay, you take the pressure delta P from where you're at and deduct the certain drill by pressure to get delta P. You time the initial volume of the PTN. All right, you have that's, that's all you have to base on. You have to gain based on the PTN. No, nothing else you can base on. Okay, and you divide it by formation pressure, deduct the pressure reduction on the group pipe gauge. All right, guys, thank you very much. And I hope you guys did get some useful information out of this video. And uh, this, all these explanations are the reason why you need to stick with you know, time consuming curing methods, controlling the choke, so that we can get the air gas out of the well in a control manner and fill the mud, kill mud into the well to overbalance the formation pressure. All right, and I hope uh, you guys enjoy it. And if you have any questions or queries or recommendations, please just feel free to forward them to my personal email address at lichmetron01 at yahoo.com.hg. See you soon in the next session of Web Control and Drilling. Bye.